everyone. Uh, sorry about this being a <clears throat> voiceover. It seems that I'm getting used to my new camera and didn't realize I didn't have the microphone on. So here I just wanted to show you, I trace, retraced it. Um, and <clears throat> although I was pretty close, uh, there were some areas that needed a little changing. Uh, basically the areas that I'm gonna put some different shades in. So the first color I'm gonna use here is orange and it is by Master's Touch. So this orange will be considered like a cadmium orange. Um, so, uh, and then I also have this lime green, uh, which is phthalo. I think it's, it's like a lime green and I'll have that in the front of uh, this posting. I'm just showing you the colors right now. Sorry about that. That's the Alizarian Crimson. Um, <clears throat> hope everyone is doing well uh, in the quarantine here that we're experiencing. This is an emerald green or um, you can use sap green. Or uh, green oxide could be fine with this also. So basically these are the colors and I believe I have also some... Um, raw umber or burnt umber i'm not exactly sure which one i use but like i said i will put that in the front unfortunately like i said it's uh i'm doing this as a voiceover which is a little bit crazy for me because i can't there we go it's, it's burnt umber i'll be mixing that with some of the shades in in this elephant <clears throat> And right now we're just doing the background. We have the ba background coat, but we're gonna put another coat on here that has some color so that when we go into putting the actual um, color of the elephant, this, this will kind of help to show through. It's almost like, uh, it just uh, kind of gives it a little bit of oomph instead of just being a dull little elephant. <clears throat> Every every animal um, is great. Okay, I believe that is my number six. Unfortunately, I'm so sorry. Um, I'll just put those in the front. I believe, I, I think I used the number 10 and I know I used my six. And these are bristle brushes. And then I ended up using a filbert. Um, now I'm just beginning here. Uh, I'm using the uh, burnt umber, or raw umber straight, or burnt umber, I'm sorry. Burnt umber straight on. <clears throat> and you'll see where I'm put it, placing it. It's up in the top left corner. And this, uh, this tracing is available on Patreon if you become a dollar a month subscriber or even like the other ones, you, you will be having access to this. You can become a $5. Uh, I'm gonna start getting some things up there on Patreon that, um, you know, the little things that you can maybe get if you're a subscribe, you know, if you uh, help support me. <clears throat> I'm learning a little bit of a lot of different things that um, while I'm in this quarantine, uh, I'm taking some classes on Skillshare. So <clears throat> I can actually put a link to Skillshare where you will get some um, uh, discount uh, if you decide to take classes on there with my link. It's amazing the things that they have on there. I mean, I don't know if I'll be able to get everything in while I'm on this quarantine. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just putting in the, the burnt umber in certain areas. And you can just follow if you, you know, you can always stop the video 
just to have a better idea where we're at here with this. I hope you all are doing well. <clears throat> just staying out, I mean, staying in, not going out as much as possible. I mean, I've had to go out a few times to do some uh, food shopping. I'm trying to keep myself at a distance because <clears throat> I do worry about getting this coronavirus. I don't know if I'll be able to fight it. <clears throat> I'd like to hear from you. Let me know that you're doing well. I think about my patrons and my subscribers all the time. I definitely want to say prayers for you. So if you are in need or even thoughts, if you don't, if you're not a religious person or theological person, I just need to hear and hear from you that you are okay, that you are weathering the storm. You can always uh, check my Facebook page. Uh, Facebook uh, is Pittsburgh Artist Studio, and um, if you have like started this, if you have any questions, um, please ask me, I, I'll be happy to answer. <clears throat> See, I, I basically have like the chalk is where I, the white chalk is where I had the um, elephant drawn and the black is graphite. So as you can see, it's not that far off. The only parts that I had really off were the uh, areas where I'm putting in the color. So um, sometimes it's just kind of good to get that drawing habit in to see how close you can get it. Uh, this, may, this might seem silly, but uh, you can kind of tweak where your, your ear, areas are of weakness. And... Uh, this will help you in portrait painting also. Um, you know, you want to try to get as close as possible to those things. So I'm getting all those brown areas in. Here at the ear, it's kind of roughly, so you kind of want to ruffle that up a little bit. And, and I've got some of those areas that I'm going to be putting in there also. Um, with the burnt umber. It's almost like doing a paint by number, except, uh, you know, the, it's, it's a little different than a paint by number. I mean, it, it's closely related, but this comes out so much nicer. And if you um, have watched my previous video um, where I uh, paint Louis, a uh, Louis, I am going to put that in the information up at the top right. Um, you, I did this uh, for Lewis too. And um, it just makes sense. Okay, so yes, uh, just, you know, like um, you can always stop this video. But like I said, I was talking about Lewis and I did this for Lewis. And I did, I think, in a couple other of my paintings that I sh shared, you know, my lessons. Um, and it just really, it just kind of like sparks the painting. Uh, you can glaze this if you want, uh, but I, I'd rather paint it in because then that way it shows through that layer uh, much better than, um, than like a glaze over this. So, uh, or day three, uh, when I get to that, uh, hopefully I have this conquered and understand where I went wrong with the um, microphone. I'm not one to, 
to really do too well with a voiceover trying to figure out what I did. But um, I think I'm picking up a different shade here. I have to just see what I've been using here, what I'm using. I don't know. Um, I believe, okay, this is the orange. So that would be like your cat orange medium uh, or um, I would, or just the orange in the master's touch. But this would kind of be like your cad medium, cad orange medium. And sometimes it's very difficult to get the cad orange medium in, um, in just the, uh, without being a hue. Um, they've been making this now with just the hue, and I think that's what this is. It's just the hue. Uh, several years ago when I took a class up at the community college, um, I had bought some cat orange from Utrecht and it was not a hue and uh, it was very, it's very vibrant, more vibrant than this orange. But like I said, we're just putting this underneath so it doesn't need to be, um, you know, like a, a regular paint. <laughs> I'm still adding some more orange into this. So and you can you can see that some of that gray gray, well that was like the burnt umber with the ultramarine blue and white back the you know base color the background color. You can see some of that coming through this orange. And that's what we want. That's exactly what we want. So then we're going to have that on top, another color or, you know, like the actual um, painting that we do will be very much close, uh, will be a lot closer. Um, it'll pop through that top, top layer, the final layer. I think I went to get some uh, other shade. As you can see, uh, I'm not doing anything right now, so I might be looking for another shade um, of paint because I saw my backdrop was uh, moving. But this, this new camera, look at how nice that picture is. I, I'm real happy with this camera that I bought. I was watching some YouTube videos and uh, it was showing that um, the camera was worth $2,000, so it's a nice camera. Okay, now here I'm putting my Alizarian Crimson. I may have mixed this with a little uh, bit of burnt umber to kind of give me that brownish tone, or I... I and this is up to you. This is entirely up to you. Your shades are your tones, your values, however you want to make this, um, this second coat of background uh, is entirely up to you, but I'm just showing you how I would do it. Now I got this uh, picture off of Pixabay, or Pixabay and um, as you can see, it's sort of like an orangish, maybe an orangish uh, red shade. And I'm just kind of making it very red. Oh, here, I'm sorry. I did mix this like an orangish shade here. So I just put the Alizarian Crimson into the orange and kind of made this. to a layer there. Once again, you can pause the, um, the video at this point if you would like just to see how, how I'm putting these in. Uh, 
It is entirely up to you. I would try to stick with co colors as close as possible. Now, I mixed that alizarian, just a little bit of that alizarian into the orange and got that shade. It's sort of like a peachish color um, instead of straight orange. Now, I think I have another shade I'm putting maybe that, let me see, oh, it's yellow. Now, this yellow, uh, normally uh, tad yellow is a little bit transparent. So I am um, mixing that with some titanium white. And that could be uh, tad yellow light or tad yellow medium. Um, so I did mix that with titanium white just to get it less transparent. I mean, you still want some of that uh, background uh, that we put in first to show through. So you don't want it too opaque. This uh, isn't a lot of mixing, it's just, there we go, see I put a little bit of white in there, kind of just to give it a little bit more pop, it brightened that up a bit. Now, don't forget, um, if you would like to see me paint something, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, you know, I'm going to stick with some of these animals that are becoming extinct uh, so that there's an awareness of that. Uh, to, uh, I'm sure that my, my followers here, my subscribers know that there is a, a problem with poachers and um, maybe you don't know but I'd like to bring that to your the forefront in some of my paintings and I love doing animals um, it's always been one of my favorite things to do I think I started out okay I'm gonna be using this yellow green it's like a lime green um, we're going to be putting some of that in. I, I just, uh, I think since, I think I remember it in the second grade, I may have told you this story once before, but we had to uh, draw a bird and I picked a red bird. And, you know, I have not seen many red birds lately. And there's something about the red bird uh, that if you see a cardinal, isn't it that an angel came to visit you or something like that? I'd like to know. I can't remember what that is, but um, I drew this cardinal and I was in the second grade and um, I did a pretty good job on it, you know, being what, seven, eight at the time. And of course, uh, everybody in the classroom thought I traced it. And they, they, they were saying that I cheated and I didn't cheat. I mean, I was just, I love to draw. Even at that age, I was drawing, you know, I, I wished I would have um, 
stayed closer to it, you know, like they used to have this uh, program at the uh, Carnegie Museum here in Oakland, Pennsylvania. And um, I never got picked for that. It would have been so nice to be able to have gone. Uh, but some of those teachers at the time, they had their pets and those were the ones that went, you know, it was, it's not like it is today. I don't know if the kids today are uh, treated that way by the teachers, if there's certain ones that the teachers like more than the others, but boy, it was very obvious in my growing up um, that certain teachers like certain students and I, I think I started to uh, blossom more when I was in high school um, and and somewhat in uh, junior high, I had a teacher that um, I really liked her and uh, I still remember her uh, parents were um, actually shot uh, and they were having a dispute with the auto body shop that was right next to their home and I guess they were having some disputes and uh, the guy shot the mom and then she became like a paraplegic in the chair and uh, that was awful I can remember that Miss Hancheck I think that was my seventh grade English teacher or eighth grade I can't quite remember but junior high school was different then too, you know. It was like seventh to ninth grade. And then when I went into high school, um, a lot of the teachers were different. Okay, now here I'm still putting that lime green in. They were more personable. I mean, we still had some teachers that were kind of like strict and things like that, but at least uh, there was more personality to them. Okay, I think I'm just putting a straight, straight, yes, yeah, straight uh, uh, cad yellow here with some white. Can you see that now? Like when we put the top coat on here when we finish this painting, this these are going to pop through these colors. These colors are going to pop through. Kind of looks like psychedelic almost, <laughs> but uh, it'll all it'll all work out. You might be able to hear my Sally. She's snoring. <laughs> As I'm doing this voiceover. Okay, now here I think I'm adding more of the Alizarian mix. Now, as I did this, uh, if you recall, I posterized the photo, um, and I did that in Photoshop. I like to do that because what happens is it brings out some of those underneath colors, which we're definitely seeing here. This is what was underlying on, in this uh, picture or this photo that I am using. Yeah, so I'm using that Alizarian, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that I did add a little bit 
just a little bit of the umber, the burnt umber in here. Just, I'm just tapping in some of the areas uh, with that color, uh, that uh, paint. Now I'm using all acrylic. I like acrylic because it dries fast. Now, what I may have done here with this Alizarian is I added some white to it. Um, I believe that's what I did here. So, as you can see, it's a lot lighter than the uh, in the top left corner there. And I'm just tapping that in because those those shades are underlying and they're not very deep. Now here I'm going back to my uh, burnt umber. And in, in the uh, elephant's trunk, there's quite a bit of that um, underneath. And now I'm using the sap green, and what I did is I mixed some burnt umber into that also. I get that green shade. Just tapping it into the ear and around the ear. Just tapping it in. This will give it some texture. Just keep tapping it in.
Adding more of that pink shade that I had lightened up for the Alizarian Crimson. Kind of just blending some of that into the top there. Now this is on his tusk. Now that one big area there where it's gray, I'm not uh, painting into that because that's basically going to be a white color shade and I want that gray to come through there. I'm getting pretty close to finishing this up. Now I put in a little bit more of the yellow into that area. It's a highlight there. Just tapping it in. Boy, the wind is blowing today. It was beautiful here yesterday. It was so warm and it was like in the 70s. So I'm adding a little white there because um, it is so bright in that particular spot um, where the sun is coming into the onto the surface of the elephant. Now that gray portion that's right there between the trunk and the leg. Uh, you could do an off-white in there, but I just kind of want to keep that gray shade. Just tapping in the color. It's best when you tap it in, kind of gives that texture on the uh, elephant. Just provides that extra amount of texture that you <clears throat> will need to see in the skin of this elephant. And I would do this even on a portrait. I mean, I would clusterize a portrait the same way if you have a photo just to see what the underlying colors, skin tone colors are. Because um, everybody's skin tones are different. There's greens, there's blues, uh, there's peachy colors, and that kind of helps to bring it out. You can see it so much better. We're just about finished here. It's looking good. <laughs> it's 
So I hope for the final uh, painting that I get the sound adjusted. I think I know where I made my mistake, but um, it's all learning and a learning experience with me on the camera. But I'm loving the angle and how close it is. And, you know, I don't have to adjust the video at all. Sorry that my hand is in the way, but you'll see what I am painting. There's no way that I can angle this camera. Now I'm placing some of that burnt umber around the eye. It's kind of dark for this uh, around the eye for this elephant. And if you look at this, I mean, you can see, okay, I'm pointing out there what, what goes there uh, eventually. You can almost see the actual vision of this elephant. Um, his trunk is in his mouth. Uh, I think it shows pretty well. His tusks. Okay, let me see what I'm doing here. I might be just uh, hmm. I'll have to see what I did here because I'm not sure myself. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm just coloring the tusk there. Oh, it, there's actually a spot behind there that is a dark green. Um, instead of that bright green, it's more of the sap green with burnt umber in it, mixed in it. So I'm hoping you turn, tune into my part three. Uh, this is kind of keeping it at not a long, lengthy process. If I split it up like this, um, maybe, you know, you watch to the end. It's always good. I'm almost finished with this now. And, um, oh, well, I guess I did paint that in. I didn't realize that I did that. But I'm just lightly painting it in. And... Um, Using, I guess, a little bit of white and greenish shade underneath there. Yeah, I did paint it in. Okay, so I'm using white, just titanium white in there and uh, just going to finish that off, I guess. So that part I probably won't even have to worry about now next time when I do paint the final painting, getting a little white into the tusk. This is almost a cool painting just as it is, but we want to finish it up, make it really pop. So I'm about to finish up and I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. Please like and subscribe and if you want to hear from me more often, hit the little bell. Uh, give me a thumbs up and comment because I like to hear what you think of my paintings. If you want me to continue doing these types of paintings or if you want me to change. So um, until next time, bye.